Hi there, Michelle Webb here with www.registrymindset.com. So glad you joined me on this video because I want to talk to you today about something that, that I just read and I think it's so important to what we as cancer registrars do uh, on an everyday basis. I recently read this article by Jim Cathcart. He's a uh, very well-known sales coach. And he was talking about high-value relationships, connecting with people, and how to build your business, become more successful, and so forth. In the article, he asked this question. And this, is, this question is packed, boy. It says, who is glad to know you? So when we're talking about relationships, we've all heard someone say, well, it's who you know that counts, uh, it's what you know that counts, whatever. But in business, it really is who is glad to know you that says it all. And, and let, let's explore this a little bit more. Cathcart also talks about a new term that's being used in business these days called relationship intelligence. And what that means is that we will take an intelligent approach to how we select, connect, cultivate, maintain relationships, not only in our business life, but in our personal life, our social life, or, or what it, wherever we're at. It just means that we're going to weed out those relationships that don't add value to our life. You're going to build on those that bring value. You're either going to change or weed out those that don't. Now, a high-value relationship is simply a relationship where the two people or the group of people get something out of it. Have you ever had, had a, a friendship with someone who is only asking you for something, you don't get anything out of it, and pretty soon you dread doing things with that person? That is not a high-value relationship. But when you have a relationship where you know that there's give and take and that you can help as well as you can receive help when you need it, that's where the value comes in. Now, this can be support. It can be friendship. It can be family. It can be a lot of different things. It can even be business. Certainly can be cancer registry. A high-value relationship can be amongst cancer registrars, or it can be with, with the people in your cancer program activities. The key with a high-value relationship is that you get to decide what the value is and what the effects of the relationship are in your life. Now, we need these high-value relationships because that's just the essence of our life. And the more we get, the more we want from life, the more we give, the more we're able to bring back. So being successful and being happy has to do with how we can help other people, how we can serve other people. And certainly that's the role, too, of a cancer ready, uh, registry leader. It's not just about what we can get. It's not just about what people can do for us. It's about really the essence of leadership, as John Maxwell says, is influence of other people and it's service to other people. So when we look at our high-value relationships, of course, we want something back, but you also have to factor in what can you give. Cathcart says that there are three qualities of a high-value relationship. These are really good. Number one, both parties are committed to the success of the relationship. It can't be one-sided. There must be enough trust for the truth to be able to flow freely back and forth. Truth is a very important key there. And you know, if you've ever had a friend that can just be really honest with you, that's a really important friendship. Now, in the a, another quality, the number th three quality, is both of you need to understand what you can expect from the other person. So you need some clear agreements. These can be spoken, unspoken. You need to know what you can expect. Now, how do you know which relationships you're going to invest in? And, and the reason I bring this up is because it's important. A lot of times we meet someone, you may not hit it off right, and so you kind of discount that relationship or that connection with that person. And a high-value relationship basically keeps all your options open. You don't pass judgment. You, you leave that person open because what happens is even if you don't connect with that person, that one individual you didn't connect with knows many other people and they may be able to connect you up with someone as well. So by leaving your connections open, not only are you showing yourself to be the true leader, 
a good friend, a considerate, kind person, but you are also allowing goodness and opportunity to come back into your life. Now, some people get confused between a high-value relationship or a connection. Some people say, well, exactly what is a relationship? And, and there's a lot of different definitions out there. But I like this one. Cathcart says a relationship is a direct connection between people where value is exchanged. That's really truly a relationship, isn't it? It can be with your children. It can be, it, maybe it's even with your pets. I don't know. It's something that brings value back to you. Now, you've all heard that, you know, the, the acorn, you know, one little acorn can grow the mighty oak. When we invest in our relationships, we're basically sowing acorns to grow the one mighty oak. And then that oak tree is going to produce hundreds of thousands of acorns and grow more oak trees. Building relationships, establishing connections with people is exactly like that. And we do that all the time in the cancer registry. But what's important is that we need to plant the acorn seed. We need to nurture and water and cultivate and help that oak tree grow. And we need to be conscious about where we plant and where we select our next relationships. Now, here's something else that I think is really important. Cathcart mentions that your reputation should be planned in advance and managed intentionally. A lot of times we think that our reputation is just something that happens. Maybe we don't have a lot of control over it. Maybe we don't want to take control over it. But you as a cancer registrar, in order to know whether people are going to be glad that they know you, whether you can be the leader and deliver that service and value, you need to plan that and and cultivate it and watch it grow. It, it, it's like your asset. This, this is your prized possession. And if you don't get involved with this process, then your reputation is going to be kind of crumbly. It's going to fall by the wayside. It very well can end up not being the kind of reputation that you once said about you. Again, if you think of this question, are they glad to know me? It really changes the perspective on how we build our relationships and our friendships, doesn't it? Okay, let's just really quickly summarize what is here. The basis for relationship intelligence or the basis for how we, we manage and, and connect with people is that we need to treat our relationships like assets, like our prized possessions. It really is all about who cares. How can you care? How can you invest in people? How can you invest in, in helping them and serving their needs? And again, John Maxwell says leadership is all about influence and it's about caring for other people from, from a deep place in your, in your heart and your soul. Now, relationships can compromise business. So, you have to be really careful that, that you communicate and that you maintain those connections with people that you're selective and the ones that you choose so that you don't compromise your business. As a cancer registrar, it's so easy to, to maybe start your day off on a wrong foot. Someone comes in, it kind of sets everything off. Maybe you end up participating in a conversation that isn't conducive to building that relationship. Sometimes one little event like that can set the stage and could compromise your effectiveness as a leader and as a cancer registrar. So it's something we just need to be very conscious about. The rules of engagement or the rules of how you select your friends and your connections depends on the outcome you want. I know that I have friends that, that, that support me in different ways and I have a different group of friends that I provide a different level of support to. The same is in business, the same for us as cancer registrars. You, you are going to support your coworkers or your staff in a different way than what you're going to support your administrator or your physicians. All of that is dependent on what that desired outcome might be. 
the key to success is starting with your inner circle. So how do you know where to start? How do you know which evaluation or how to evaluate uh, which connections or relationships you have? Start with your inner circle. Start with those five to ten people that are closest to you. Look at those relationships and decide if they're bringing value. Are you reaching your goals? Are they there to support you and help you? Are you there to support them? And if you aren't, then you may want to look at that value of relationship and either change it, maybe even eliminate it. So you see, all about high value relationships is all about managing your intentions and managing your reputation, cultivating and growing connections with people from a caring place in your heart, from a place of where you are serving and helping their needs. I think this is just a really phenomenal topic. We could probably go on all day, but I know that you need to get back to work and you have things to do. So I appreciate your time. That's the that's the greatest compliment you can pay me is just to spend a couple times a couple minutes with me here and there. Finish reading the rest of this blog post. Leave me a comment at the bottom where it says comments, and I'll look to see you on the next uh, uh, audio or video. So this is Michelle Webb signing off, and I hope you have a blessed day.